Hi. Um, so today we're going to uh, go over how to back up your NFT files by running them and pinning them on your own IPFS node. Uh, the basic 10 second idea of this is that um, a, lot of these, a lot of these NFT marketplaces, they host them through some service provider like a gateway such as Cloudflare or Pinata. And if those services were ever go down, and they brought their servers down with them, the files that were on the, those servers would no longer exist on the IPFS network and uh, your NFT would still exist, but it would point to a file that didn't exist. So the point of this is that we, you wanna back up the NFTs that mean something to you, run them on your local machines, that way you, that way you can always access them, uh, no matter if uh, Cloudflare or something decides to not support I, IPFS anymore. Um, so it's pretty quick. The first thing we have to do is um, install IPFS desktop. I'll include this link below. I'm running Windows, so I'll run the uh, Windows setup. And then uh, run it. I'll install just for me, one user. And when, I, when I install this, it'll install both a app and a command line tool, which we'll be using. So it takes a second for the daemon to run up, or spin up. Um, and been, you can see here now we are a node on the IPFS network, which is a cool thing. I feel like a, I'm reliving the um, BitTorrent days. Um, you can see this is our peer ID, which is just our address as a node on the network. If we go over to files on the left-hand side, this tab. Uh, it takes a second to load. There, there we go. Uh, you'll see we haven't, we don't have any files because we haven't downloaded anything using IPFS. But we can go to uh, the pins, clicking on this um, pins word, and this will show us uh, all the pins we have um, right now. So if I click this first one, you'll see this is just basically the IPFS comes pre installed. And right now, uh, what this means is that this file will exist permanently on the network as long as I or someone else has this exact uh, folder being hosted. And if I did not pin this, um, for instance, if I uh, unpinned it, what that would mean is that um, that garbage collection, which is an algorithm that comes and sweeps through the IPFS system, will delete that file from my node. Very likely, since this is pre-installed, it's installed on a lot of nodes. so if someone wanted to access that file, they uh, say, okay, find me this hash. It'll find it on someone else's computer. If no one else had it on the computer, then they wouldn't be able to access it. Anyway, so we can do the same thing in the command prompt. And this is a good way to see if you have IPFS installed correctly. IPFS um, version that should return some number. Uh, if it doesn't, then you might have to try reinstalling again. Uh, we call it the IPFS pin ls, which will list all the pins. You can see we have one pin here and one pin here. So that's how we know the command line interface and GUI are talking properly. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, first I'll show you how to manually pin NFTs that you care about. Right, so I have um, this NFT, which I purchased on foundation. I want to back it up. Um, there's this button, sorry, let me go back. There is this button, which is common on, on a lot of marketplaces called view on IPFS. If I click it, I'll open this sort of metadata file. If I zoom in, you can see a few things that in this metadata file is a description title, blah, blah, blah of the piece. But what, we, what we're after is this sort of IPFS link. And we only really want um, the hash starting with QM and ending with .mp4. So let's copy that. Uh, let's jump over back to the command line. Um, and so the first thing we have to do is just sort of read it on our system. And uh, what I'm doing here is naming it an item. Let's call it rock or um, and the reason you have to name it here is just because if you don't, they'll just be this crazy matrix looking, uh, unreadable thing. Um, press enter. 
you can see that we uh, basically downloaded it on our machine. And now we can go to pin add. This will add a pin, we point it to here. Then I press enter. And now I have successfully pinned this file. So if I hop back over to uh, my desktop tool, go over to my files, you'll see I have uh, two pins. I previously unpinned one, and now this is the new pin. It's a file you can see. Uh, if I click it, uh, it won't play in this app, but you'll see this is the actual um, this is the actual file hosted from my machine, which is awesome. So that's how to do it quick and dirty one at a time. You could do this with your entire collection or the stuff that you've minted. Um, but there is an automated tool for hic ec nunc, which I'll get into right away. So there's this tool on GitHub created by Adam Ivy, which is a JavaScript tool you can run locally with Node that automatically looks at all the NFTs in your hic et nunc um, Tezos wallet and uh, will automatically pin them to your node. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So first thing we have to do is go ahead and download a zip, or you can download or clone it. Uh, for now, we'll just um, uh, download the zip. And let's put this folder on our desktop for now, but you should put it somewhere where you want to keep it. And go into the tool. And when we're, when we're in here, a cool trick I like to do is highlight the file path and hit CMD to launch, to launch the command prompt directly in the file explorer. Um, so what we can do now, and of course, let me go back a little bit. The, these instructions require that you install Node.js. So Node.js, you can just install the um, setup tool and it'll install it on your system pretty easily. But once you've done that, come back here. And what you can do is node audit.js which is a JavaScript file in this folder, and give it your Tezos wallet. So let me copy my public key there, paste it, and it takes a second. Let me zoom in again. And you can see here, it got all the NFTs that I have for sale, um, sold out, or what I've, what I've minted but not given a price to. So that's working. Um, now we actually want to use this tool to pin. So what we do is we type um, node pin.js and again, give it our key. Sorry, our, our wallets, Hazel's wallet public key. Press enter and you'll see this fetching content. Da 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 da. This is a uh, Pinning the metadata now it's actually pinning the files. And it'll just take a moment. Cool. So as you as you can see, these all pinned recursively. And there's different kinds of pinning, but what we want is recursive. Um, so that looks great. We can double check our work by going over to our IPFS desktop tool, going to files. And now we see that we have 137 pins, whereas before we had two. So that's great. Um, and what, again, just to reiterate re what this was pinning, I gave it my address, which is here. And this is my hic at nunc page. So it backed up all the files you see on my creations page and on my collections page. Um, and you might be wondering, where, where is this actually being downloaded to? If we open our finder uh, and you go to uh, PC, your local disk, um, users, your name. It's been stored in this file here. So if you ever want to uninstall um, IPFS for some reason, you would go to add or remove programs, search IPFS, uninstall it. Once that's done, go in and delete these two files here, which have some leftover config files and your uh, uh, seed address. So that's how to fully wipe it off your system in the future. Last thing we can do is go back here and type in FFS pin ls, and that'll just list everything you have pinned uh, from your address. That's another way if you want to look for a specific hash 
<laughs> you, can, you can do that if you want. The last thing I'll suggest is downloading a tool called Epicvest Companion. And what this will allow you to do is um, open some files that begin with IPFS slash slash. Uh, whereas most browsers today don't support tapping into the IPFS network. They only support like HTTP or HTTPS. Here you can actually um, tap into it directly from the browser. These aren't, I'm not showing an example here. I'm just running these locally, but that's what that companion plugin is for. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hope that tutorial is helpful.